welcome everyone to another episode of the Comic Chronicle Podcast. I'm your guys' host, Dakota Morgan, coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. Today we have on a wonderful guest. Megan Fitzmartin is on the show. Megan has been a writer on so much shit. Comics for DC, DC Animation, as well as podcasts, television, like Supernatural. So much stuff she has been a part of. And she's joining me here on the show, all the way from the UK, at least at the moment. So she's joining me, and we talk about a lot of shit, folks. We talk a lot of motivational, inspirational stuff stuff about taking the leap in life you know evolving as a person we also talk a bit about green arrow as well too and how he's underrated and how he deserves more love and megan needs the right green arrow do you see get it get it going and we talk so much more so if you guys enjoy this episode subscribe to wherever you guys listen to podcast it helps us out greatly here on the show if you guys want to support as well, there's also the YouTube channel that I have, Dakota Morgan on YouTube, where I do video games tied into comics or paleo stuff as well, too, with dinosaurs and all the jazz like that, and Dino Times, and Twitch, CodaRex97. Social media is X, or Triple X if you're feeling fancy, is at Dakota Morgan 3 on X, and then Instagram at Dakota underscore Morgan 97, and it'll be in the description down below. But yeah, folks, thanks for tuning in. I really do, everybody listening right now, you guys are like a big family. Like, this show's been going on almost five years now. You guys are a giant family family here on the podcast and i wanted to say like i love every single one of you who listen and it means the world to me that you still keep supporting the show you guys are perfect and without me rambling on anymore too like i said though be sure to subscribe folks leave a review also it helps us out a lot when you leave a review for the algorithms that shit really does and help promote the show tell your friends about us you know be like hey parents or you know let's just put it on when you're in the middle of a car see be that type of person i guess all the support does help folks and makes the show bigger and sometimes maybe even better too because who knows where we can go with the show thanks everybody so let's dive into my talk with megan hello oh hello hi so sorry about that i didn't get your email until literally just now oh really oh (laughs) i was wondering about that i'm like i don't know what's going on like it it... no i know i like i my my phone buzzed and i was i was looking at it and i was like oh it said it sent a while ago but i literally just got it (laughs) That is such a pain in the ass, especially when it comes to text messages. It is. I don't know why that seems to be a thing, but welcome. (laughs) Hello. I'm so sorry about that. No, it's a okay here. Um, Usually I do want to make it to usually like to do try to do video and make life a little bit easier for everybody. But right now my studio is trash. They're in the middle of moving a bunch of things and some shelves came down. So it looks like a war zone. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, oh, it's been a pain. <laughs> like I'm I came so home. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's it's okay. I luckily nothing killed my cat. Who was luckily like Very nowhere good. near the incident. I just came home and my wife was like, "So something happened." And I'm like, "What?" Oh happened? no. <laughs> <laughs> something happened. Yeah, it's it's fine. As long it's fine. As, I mean, as long as nothing, no one got hurt. Everybody's okay. Yeah, the neighbors probably who live downstairs are probably like, "What did they do? Oh, <laughs> what, no. what happened over there?" Like, oh no, they already hit us with the dogs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, welcome. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time today at all. I know you're definitely a very busy person because uh, it seems mm-hmm. like you're always having working on something. <laughs> I mean, with the market the way that it is currently, uh, got to, got to keep moving forward or you will, you will get stuck. It's, it's very true. I actually had a conversation yeah. with someone about that the other day, um, as a comic book writer myself and writer for a few different things over the years. And yeah, it's definitely, like, I had to explain it to my wife who doesn't work in media at all. She's, yeah, uh, she's, we met working with animals and so explaining oh. media stuff to her she's just like this is a brave new world I'm like it is isn't it <laughs> like, crazy <laughs> isn't this hustling. a fun time isn't it horrible and <laughs> also fun at the same time we also cried <laughs> yeah yeah um, my partner and i both work in entertainment in different aspects of entertainment but still in the entertainment and we're both con- like i i am so grateful that like early on in my career I was like I like doing everything I don't want to be stuck to just one thing I want to make sure that I can do all of it and now I'm like thank god because if I only stuck with one I'd be up shit's creek oh yeah honestly best advice best advice because there's so many people I met when I worked in the film uh, I mean shoot I'm not trying to move on horn but like it's a little background like you know I worked as a gaffer as a screenwriter oh cool all the yeah. stuff like yeah, cameraman, set designer, costume designer, actor, all the stuff. And yeah, even voice acting. And I did all this, and people are like, Why are you training to do all this? You should just do one. I'm like, within well, your fool. Because then you're, yeah. you're like you're never gonna get the jobs. Like you gotta do all the jobs. 
I and, mean, I have the same. I have the same. Like, he, whenever I was on Supernatural, all of my folks were like, "But you should just you you need to focus on just the one thing." And I was like, "I don't want to. I like all of it. Why would I? Why would I stick to this?" And now I'm like, "How's that going for you guys?" <laughs> because yeah. There's just no, there's no, it's just, it's not the time, not the vibes, not the time right now. No, no. And you, you were saying it because in time scheduling us, you're in the UK though, currently. I am. Yeah. I go back and forth between uh, LA and the UK every couple of months, basically. Mm. Um, so yeah. For it's, work or it's for fun? Personal? Both. I mean, oh. there's <laughs> definitely, there's definitely work here. My partner is British and he's an only child and his parents are older. So we, we try and, and be here as much as we can for them. Um, I'm also trying to get citizenship just so that it is easier for us to go back and forth. Oh, that's gotta um, be, yeah. 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 But uh, that in and of itself is its own sort of fun visa excursions and, and trials and tribulations. So you know, the fun never stops is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's it's definitely interesting because there's um, a friend of mine, actually, uh, one of my old bosses uh, when I used to be an animal cop. She actually her partner actually lives in the UK as well. Like he lives with he's a mm. chef. So she has to go back and forth and travel. I'm not making this up. This is the honest truth. Like she travels back and forth and she's there right now enjoying like their lovely daytime. I'm like, how the hell do you do this? Uh, the insane. Yeah, it, live- I mean, oh. The nice thing, like, you can do it. I think that's the thing is that, like, mm. especially in the UK, it is a, it's a much normal, exi- much more normal existence to go between countries because the countries are just much smaller here. And so true. And they're right have, there, too. Yeah, exactly. So, like, it isn't the mentality is, is pretty is pretty like, oh, yeah, no, that like it, it can be a lot. But y- of course you would go and travel and do as much as you can. And I have found that, like, with uh, people that I know and love in LA, they're like, "How do you go?" And I was like, "You just, you just prioritize things." Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very lucky to own my place in LA, and so that helps it out too. So I'm not pay- paying rent; I'm just paying mortgage. Um, we own a place in London as well, and so, you know, it's, it's figuring out the, the easy realms because, like. It's not like we own a, a really nice house or anything. We own a boat. Like, that's what oh. we live on whenever we're here. Like, it is... Uh, y- you make you make those types of choices when you're like, okay, the priority is to be able to go back and forth. So what do you... W- what do we do in order to facilitate those choices, you know? I'm picturing the houseboat as... I don't know if you saw Ted Lasso or not, but there's the houseboat scene in there where, like, if someone... In, I, in I did see that, and we were watching it, and I was going, first of all, <laughs> you can't... You can't have... Like, you can't... I know how much is involved in filming and, like, the crew and everything. Yeah. That is not a boat. That, like, you... <laughs> the inside... You could not put a whole camera crew on the inside of that boat. It. Absolutely not. I love it so much. You guys probably press pause. We're like, okay, listen here. I mean, <laughs> well, the other side of it too is that like we're also renovating the boat because the boat is built in the eighties, and so there's a oh, lot no. of like leather, like not even good leather, like vinyl. It's not even leather. It's like yellowed vinyl because the previous oh, owners no. were smokers, and no. so, uh, yeah, and so like we were watching that scene in Ted Lasso and we were like, this isn't realistic, but also how do we, how do you make, how did you do that? Like we should need, how do we get that to be and like lo- talking about different renovation styles and tips and tricks and stuff like that. Cause it, you know, it's a real vibe. It's a real fun time. I highly yeah. recommend everybody living in a Marina at least once, you know, I mean, in the States here, I mean, I'm kind of fucked because I'm in Arizona, so I get one Lake at the moment. There, uh, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you're kind of landlocked, huh? Yeah, I mean, I can go to the bit. lake. The lake's pretty nice down there. I don't know if I want to live on it. I, last time I went to the lake jet skiing with my uncle family it was a while back. And uh, I did see somebody, and it just, I don't know why, but it was the, the best business thing I've ever seen, was somebody was selling beer and ice cream on a boat. And you could Ooh. swim up to the boat. 
and they would go around the I mean it's a pretty big it's a massive like it goes through caverns and stuff it looks straight out of Donatopia and if you go oh, wow. in it's oh it's I like Havasu I'm probably getting it wrong I don't remember but like I don't go there as much as young people do but yeah you, know, <laughs> you go there and like there's he's just he was just driving the boat around piloting the boat he's just going around you could swim up to him that's you so pilot good the jet ski. I love oh. that and it was a he attached the bar to it as well it was the craziest I've ever seen that's the dream that's yeah. a great yeah, there was also another one it was a smaller boat but it was only snow cones I'm like that's also amazing like also you... very good oh. i want to know how they like how everybody's paying though like do you keep your money in your in your bikini bottoms or something like how do you oh yeah that's your lot of wet cash <laughs> a lot of wet yeah. cash well, a lot of wet cash. They have that compartment on there for your phone on jet skis. So if you pilot a jet ski off there, oh, you can take it out. That's true. I'm not if that risky. Swimming, I guess, is, I mean, exactly. I'm not either. But if no. you're swimming, I feel like I don't understand how you would, like, it sounds good, but the practicality, I'm not, I'm now like, how does this, how do you, how, do, how does this work? Right, yeah, I feel like we're taking like a lot of wet stripper money. It's like, I don't know if I want your bikini cash, guys. <laughs> like, I, don't know. <laughs> I did see where this came from. And I, I don't know if it, you know what? Have this for free. Have yeah. it for free and please leave. <laughs> please just go. Please don't dump yep. it in the marina. But no. oh boy. Well, kind of getting into two of um, writing. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah, writing. People are probably just like, what's going on here? Um, I don't know <laughs> if you listen to any podcast episodes before, but we talk a billion things but comics, and we just have a great time. It's all laid back. Sounds here. great. Love it. Yeah, it's it, People sometimes complain, but I'm like, why? Like, there's so many times you have other magazines. Exactly. Or like, like you have, you can listen to other podcasts. Why would you listen yeah, to this one if that's what you're expecting? Yeah. Here's a cookie cutter thing where I just ask all these fucking questions and then it sounds yeah. blah and I'm just like, uh. <laughs> it's like, eh, it's a whole thing. Um, But I'm kind of curious, though, is you said that, you know, when did you kind of start as a writer? Oh, like kind of asking a question like that, though. But like origins, I believe, do matter for a lot of people. Yeah, especially right I now. get that. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, and this is fairly well documented. I started my, I don't know, any sort of adult career life. Um. I went to school to be a youth pastor and then did a sort of hard pivot, I would say. Um. But I, I have always loved stories. I've always been a writer, even when I was a kid. Like my my mom still has this story that I wrote for my grandmother for I don't I, it must have been her birthday or something about like it was some sort of mystery and like the there was you know this was this was not too long after nine eleven and mm. I did write a short story about bombs on a plane but it was like <laughs> pin bombs and I was like that was still in my consciousness as a kid of like processing it but um I have always loved stories I've always loved writing stories I've always loved just spending time with characters and especially when I was like in high school I was a daydreamer like I just couldn't pay attention for the life of me in class um and so I would come up with these story ideas and I would come up with like different ways to tell stories and I would just imagine all these different things. Um, and so I, I feel like I have always sort of had that, that like brain or inclination of a writer. Um, but I never fully embraced it until the last year that I was in at university and uh, I, I had a sort of, you know, come to Jesus moment of like, all right, either I could, I, I'm from the South. It's very normal in the South to be like, all right, I'm going to college to get my MRS degree, which is like to get married. Um, and my, my mental goal was like, okay, well I'll get married to like a pastor or something and I'll have 2.5 kids and I'll never leave Florida. And, or I could change the entire course of my life uh, and move to Los Angeles, which is a place that I have always loved, um, and just, you know, completely start a brand new course of life that I had never really planned or thought about, um, and decided to do that. And I have no regrets. I'm really grateful for it, but it was a very confusing and like exhausting and scary time. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I always joke that like, I don't remember my first year in LA because I was just in pure survival mode. 
like it wasn't yeah like it it wasn't drugs or anything like that because i don't do drugs but it was a thing of like a no there is no other sort of opiate as that gets you as sort of off your rocker as moving to a completely brand new city and try to start a career that you've never heard of and like never known anyone to do and just like go like i've never been I never knew anything. Like, I don't remember that. You could tell me things about that first year, and I'd be like, sure, probably. Your I'm, mental stability know. is insanely strong. <laughs> <It's Yeah. 'cause, laughs> I know, like, it is insane, Megan. Like, it is insane. Like, it's, I mean, that's a big thing, though. Like, there's so many yeah. people, though, who don't take that leap, and people who find it scary and all of that. And it's definitely like taking a leap. Like, but I, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I wanted to say like a lot of people recently in the past couple of years are taking leaps because of the world changing and evolving. But yeah, uh, it's definitely been that thing. Like, oh shit! Like I went, I took a leap not too long ago, a couple of years ago. Uh, went from entertainment business when COVID happened. I was like, well, I gotta pay bills. Yeah. What else do I know? Oh, I know animals. Yeah. So I went back into zookeeping. Yeah. Back into you know working with animals at shelters, doing this stuff like that, taking care of crocodiles, being an animal cop. That's like, so cool. Hey, yeah, it was it was fun, you know, and then working at the zoo with rhinos and stuff like it's like this whole thing. And mm-hmm. and oh boy, animal crimes got me out of it, though. But <laughs> yeah, I, I oh. can't I can't imagine that oh. that would mess me up. And on top of it, it was medical calls. So like it was a whole lot of. Ambulance. Oh. oh, yeah. If you ever want stories, I can give you a whole thing about that. <laughs> but I mean, that's also sort of my point is that like, you know, a lot of people uh, I, I, you know, it. It, it was a lot to do it the way that I did it. But at mm-hmm. the same time, I'm really grateful for it because to your point of like animal stories and things like that, I, the, the wellspring of experiences that you and I both have because of these sort of crazy experiences that we have allowed ourselves to, to just leap into that makes for great storytelling that makes for things that like you don't tend to get like I always I get very frustrated when uh people always tell me that they have like the same five movies that are on their top movie list like sure I get it Godfather is a great movie and I think that it is a really good movie but like that isn't that isn't interesting you're not making cool shit because the godfather is a cool movie or like everybody loves fight club fine but like that isn't as interesting as you know what is the obscure movie that like made you really rethink your life and and that is what happens when you you don't really go to film school you don't go to school for this and you just sort of experience life and you get these these different introductions into the world that means you're going to tell different stories and i think that that is in a time where there is a lot of sameness in in tv and movies and in in media that we're consuming it really benefits us all to stand out and recognize like well how how do we be different how do we tell a different story um then the same thing like the i don't want to put the same thing out into the world it's already that that story's already been told i want to i want to tell something different i think the it also ties into it makes you a better person like it makes you it, oh, like when you take a leap you evolve like you evolve yeah. heavily when you take a leap no matter the leap uh i took a leap of it my teaches you life. yeah it teaches you like intense empathy Yes, yes, yes. And you get more intelligent <laughs> and you get like stronger yeah. and like you get more of everything there. Like no matter the leap of where where it takes you, good or bad. Like, but I think people just don't want to take that leap because I think hell, we got that sense of comfort going on here that everyone wants to live in. And so you have yeah. that. And especially as a creative, if you never take that leap, like we were talking about in the beginning uh, when we first joined, like people just want to do that one job. If you do that one job, you're done. Yeah. You're over. Like, yeah. It's, it's done. Yeah. You got to take the leap and do other things. And taking that leap and going to LA, it's still a big one, which people are still doing today. I will say there's a lot of people from California and Arizona right now, but that's a different, that's a different story. <laughs> uh, but it, it's that taking that giant leap of, I want to do this. I want to be happy. And I think it's what a lot of people need to realize is like when you take this leap, you're not doing it because you want to like, well, I think this would be good or it'd be all right. No, you want to do it to be happy. You want to do it to like better yourself. And like that's the big yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I think that like 
I, I don't know. It, it's interesting because I'm of many minds of it. I think that like big leaps look different for different people. Like when I first decided that I was moving to LA, I thought, so I'm, I'm really close to my, my grandparents who have since passed, but I was, I, I was very, very close to them when they were alive. And I was really nervous that my grandfather was going to not like me going to uh, this big city but he he moved from he he worked on a small tobacco farm in Georgia oh. and moved to the big city of Jacksonville, Florida. And like to you and me, maybe that's not that big of a deal. But for him, that was his massive leap. You know, that was so huge for him. And I think that the important thing is to recognize for each person what their big leap is. And like even in creative spaces, you know, I, I think that I'm I'm always very supportive of anybody moving to L.A., even though it's really scary and big. But I recognize that that may not always be feasible for some people. So it's figuring out what is the big leap that you can do where you're at. Like, what is the thing that you that is that may be holding you back because you are you are comfortable um, and some people don't take that leap. And there is no ill will towards that. But you you won't grow, you won't level up in, in no matter what, you know, to, to your point, no matter what aspect of, of the industry that you're in, part of leveling up is, is putting yourself out there in a way that is scary and it's terrifying and means that you're going to maybe fail, but like failure is not that scary. Failure is just a, a new way to grow. If nobody takes anything inspirational from this or motivational for their lives in this episode, I can't help them. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, I can't. There's nothing I can do for you. I'm so sorry. It's like, it, there is a I lot. Don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what you're looking for. Yeah. No, like, what, do, what do you want in life? What yeah. do you want? You're making here, give me some good advice. All right, we're trying. We're trying. And <laughs> so much info drop for people. Um, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And when you... I just, there's just so much to it. There's so much to it to unpack there. But, and I think, you know, life itself right now is really crazy. And I know like there's a lot of it that like, you know, a lot of people are more afraid to take the leaps right now. I think especially in the creative field, because a lot of people are like, I'm just trying to pay rent, which I get. (laughs) Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to eat. Yeah. I try to do all this stuff like that. Like, if people people ask me all the time, they're like, "Oh, the podcast must pay a lot of money." I'm like, "Well, then you don't know how this works." Bless their hearts. Yeah, oh, I, like, I, I, oh. I love working in audio and in podcasts, but goodness gracious, do none of us get into it for the money? No. Oh, and especially comics too. People are like, "You have four creator owned series." Oh my I'm gosh. like, "Yes." They're like, "You must be rich." Uh-huh. No. <laughs> no. 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 That's not how this works. <laughs> Dude, it's uh, some of it's been in development for three years. People. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a, yeah. The whole thing. I, and that's the thing, too. I think a lot of people don't, never tend to realize, oh, especially in comics, like film is a while. But I think people nowadays with like behind the scenes videos and stuff like that, DVDs where I grew up watching that. Um, boy, mm-hmm. I feel kind of old. Um, but oh, VHS, when they had that at the end of the movies. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. Crazy. Star Wars. Star Wars used to do it, too. Beginning of the yeah. movie on the VHS tape, George Lucas, they'd have like a whole behind the scenes talk with them. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Wow. I'm dating myself. Oh, um, but. <laughs> I think it's like, especially comics. And I, I people, I still hear from people today. Like, I'll walk into my local comic book store, drawn the comics here, and I walk in, and people are always like, "Well, why is it taking so long?" Well, like, you guys have any idea how this works? Like, it takes yeah. so long, even for like a DC or Marvel or even Image or IDW. Like, yeah. And if you're a like an indie company itself too, you're lower behind, then it takes so long for the stuff to come out. And I don't think people ever realize that. It takes a long time, but also I think like everybody and and especially true right now, there's just this constant conversation of the death of pick your industry. Like Mm. I I am in, I I write for for TV animation, uh, comics and audio and every single one of those, I feel like I have heard no less than five people on a daily basis say oh well this is the death of x yeah and like i think that that stuff really comes around i mean it comes around often that this is always happening people are always saying that but it almost always comes around when there's big change around the corner um i read a book and i feel like i keep 
referencing this book recently, but I, I think the reason I keep referencing is because it is apropos of like the, the current times we're in. But I, I read a little while ago um, a book called Laughing with Lucy, and mm-hmm. it is by Madeline Pugh, who is one of the very first um, female writers for sitcoms. She wrote on I Love Lucy, mm-hmm. and she – it was such an interest – and, like, I, I highly recommend anybody reading it because it's such good, like, Hollywood history in and of itself, but – it was so interesting reading it and the time that she came into the business, like she moved to LA to write on a uh, CBS audio plays that they were doing oh. way, way back in the day. Like that was, that was the, the, the moneymaker at the time. And she, I, I think she wrote something for Lucy and then got, got brought in to, to Lucy's camp and everything. And she explained, like she tells the story of I love Lucy's creation and I love Lucy was like the first multicam and Desi Arnaz essentially created the way that we will do multicams at this point, like having the three different cameras and shooting it in California because originally they were shooting uh, their comedies like honeymooners and things like that from New York because New York is is the on the three hours ahead of LA and they wanted to make sure that everybody could like watch it so the broadcast was different and they essentially had to create an entirely new way to do television and that's crazy and it was such a crazy cool time but the way she talks about it was this like there was a lot of fear because nobody really knew what was going on and nobody knew what was happening next because like this thing like TV was suddenly big, but what does that mean for the industry? And, like, aspects of the industry did go away. Like, we don't have a lot of those radio dramas as much anymore, not the way that they used to be. But at the same time, we grow and we evolve and we change, and I think that that is the real lesson. Hey, guys, Dakota here, coming at you with a little ad break and ways that you can actually help support the show. Maybe asking, how can the hell can you do this? Well, how you can do it is by going into the description for this episode, wherever you guys are listening, and clicking the link on there for Redbubble. That's right, folks. We have the store, and we used to have it and promote it a little bit more, but it's coming back now, folks. The Redbubble store for the Comic Chronicle podcast. Go to the link down below to support. You can get the Comic Chronicle logo, and as well as other logos I have created for the show, and for you to wear, for you to wear on bags, shirts, sweaters, all stickers, magnets, all the stuff like that. You have Blockbuster Kid, Vigilante in Training, the podcast logo, and much more. So if you guys want to help support the show, go on over. Everything is 25% off for this year. We are doing that, guys, bringing it back for you and giving you guys a discount. So be sure to go over there, check it out, help support the show, and have some pretty good stuff. And now back to the show. That is an amazing fact. And, I, and you are you are correct, but I, that is also I never knew that fact at all, and that's beautiful. <laughs> so I'd say that's like, cool. That is cool shit. That is really awesome. I, that is I cool. like. Oh. I don't understand why we don't talk enough about the fact that Jesse Arnaz created the multicam the way that like we yeah. use the multicams today. Yes. Like he he stole he not stole, but like there was somebody. So basically, like the the actual reality of it uh, was he pulled two pieces together. So he pulled somebody else was doing a version of the multicam in LA, but they weren't broadcasting it around the U S. So he basically was like, okay, I'm going to grab this. And then I'm also going to grab this other person's way that they're broadcasting. I'm going to, I'm going to put that together with this. And then we're going to make it to where we can put all of these pieces together and have the audience. And it's so brilliant and it's so cool. And I'm like, why don't we talk about Jesse Arnaz creating this more? (laughs) so mad it's it's like a big historic thing that no one talks about yeah. like, what did, without this we wouldn't have our stuff today guys like what do you yeah what do you to, uh there was um as you were describing it too it kind of made me think a lot of like the oh the death of this the death of that it to me every time i hear that it i'm, I'm just picturing an elderly person yelling about how Music is gone forever because the kids <laughs> these days nowadays with this type of music. That's exactly uh-huh. what I think. And, but that's what uh, they said about the Beatles. That's what they yes. said about Jimi Hendrix. That's yep. what they said about literally everybody that came along was that like, oh, they're they're destroying 
the the way that music is blah 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 whatever no they're not they are doing something different and i think that is it it the the lessons that i have learned more and more recently is to spot fear mm. um what is the difference between a good criticism because there are really good criticisms out there but what is the difference between a good criticism and a fear response and i think that is an important thing for any creative to recognize even a human being i think when it comes to that yeah. like i think that's definitely not even just for creatives that's for everybody like the fear response like it's oh, yeah I, how many times i can tell you for a fact i see so many like the fear things of this is the death of comics and this is a death of, like the oh death of gosh. comics scene is insane i think that's more than television and film that i think the death of comics is so much air i see so many articles and i was like guys it's not uh -huh. what do you it's sort of like first off if anything was going to do it it would have been 2020 and that didn't yeah. do it so we're good yeah we're fine like, it is nothing here to have like that was rough and times were rough and but it wasn't the end like everything evolved yeah. and then a few years down the road we got back to how things being a normal with the comic book industry so i don't yeah know what you're talking about here oh here's something new well, also, what? yeah i mean also like we had a really big boom like I remember, so I got into comics because my dad really loved comics oh. when he was growing up. And then I was, I, I grew up in a very sort of sheltered family and uh, I wasn't allowed to see movies that were of a certain rating or had sex or anything like that. But if it was a comic book movie, I was allowed to see it. So my dad would take me because he was like, this is a comic book. This is fine. Oh, I'm boy. going to show this to my daughter. And so... I have like so I've always loved comics and I've always gotten really into to the space and like it was it's really interesting because like we've seen the boom over the course of the last like I want to say 20 years even before the Marvel movies were all up and coming like we had some really amazing storylines like Civil War and then we started to get uh, the movies coming so there was a massive boon to people going and picking up comics. And that's starting to ebb, but that doesn't mean it's the death of comics. It just means that, like, that that boom is sort of ebbing, mm -hmm. as is a normal business occurrence. Yeah, like, everything has its, uh, its highs and its lows. Yeah. But I think it's because it's been that it was that boom from what you, what you talked about, it, like, back when. It's been, like, 20-something years. So like, yeah. When, when, it's, when you're constantly used to the boom, then what it, and everything being great and everything's high and everything's wonderful yeah. and then when there's a slight dip in anything then people are like oh it's over i'm like no <laughs> no no if no. westerns can survive we'll be fine like we're, we're yeah. fine we're, we're good yeah um, but it, it's the thing that it will always come back too like i think oh, it, yeah. you know i think audio drama is a really good example like in America, we didn't really listen to audio all that much but it has continued like that is how we have hitchhiker's guide hitchhiker's guide was uh an audio drama in britain before it was a book wow, and such a beautiful story <laughs> yeah oh. it is and like you know it is it continues to be a format and now in america there is starting to be more and more of the uh, like we're, we're starting to get more audio stories and they're also coming from uh from the big studios and things like that but like you can't you don't kill it you know like it doesn't Media doesn't go away. Like records are back. Like this stuff mm -hmm. is cyclical. Yeah, yeah. There's literally a record store down the road from me here. Like yeah. it's 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 not it's not as crazy. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's oh, it's such a crazy time. It, it is a it, it's such a crazy time we live in with everything. Uh, there was even a fun little thing to talk about that for a second. Is like uh, my roommate. He was like, you know, we live in a crazy time. Like, why? He's like, because, you know, when the self-driving car pulls in front of me, I can just flip it off. And I know it's a robot. Like, you know what? Uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's a good point. <laughs> oh, I've no. always wanted to flip off robots, though. So this is really helping me out personally. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, I mean, you guys have McCallie, though, don't you? Those Waymos? Uh, I mean, I've not seen any. I'm sure we do. Okay. It, I... it's, oh, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. You can flip off the robot, Megan. You can really flip that one off. I don't know. I love it. Down, this is all that I've ever wanted. 
I want to do it now way. before they like take over and become when I become uh, uh, subservient to them. But in, yeah. in this moment, I am still the master. <laughs> it is. Oh, when, when you that door opens up and it's like, hello, insert your first name there. Like, and it's like, it did it for me. Like, it's like, hello, Dakota. Welcome it's aboard. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this is, it, yeah, oh, no. no, I don't want that. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. There's no hell here. Oh, this is, it, was, it was weird. It was really, and Phoenix is known for like, we're number one in America for angry drivers and road rage. And, and so, like, I drove I did a Waymo. Know that. Yeah. So, when I was in the Waymo for the first time, I'm like, huh, this is scary. I don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was fun. Um, well, we are kind of nearing the end here, though. Uh, so is there anything that you would like to uh, promote to tell people to go check out? I mean, you've done a lot of work, but you've had like Robins out. You've had DC and Ruby part one. You've got Young Justice. That was a thing recently. Like, what is something that you want to help promote there a little bit for you? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. I mean, whatever you want. I've probably got it. If you would like to watch an animated thing that I did, uh, Justice League meets Ruby part one and two are out. Um, if you'd like to read comics. Uh, the uh, bound edition of Tim Drake Robbins uh, issues one through six is out and is the bound version of issues seven through 10 is coming out this year as well. I think within the next couple of months. Hey. Um, and I've got a story in Beast World Atlantis and I've got a story coming out in April as well for the spring breakout. Um where I got to write for the um, Golden Age uh, Teen Titans, so like uh, Dick Grayson. So I'm I'm just working my way through my through my Robins at this point, <laughs> but uh, I got to write for a little bit for Dick Grayson, and and so that was really fun. And uh, yeah, yeah, some other some other cool stuff coming this year that um, should be announced soonishly. Ah, the NDAs. We love them. I know. I know. <laughs> a little, a little relationship. But I mean, that's a lot of like that alone is such a, a great <laughs> resume. To be honest, I'm just like, man. <laughs> this is, oh, that's that's. Oh, and by the way, I also got to say too, wonderful writing. Like, absolutely wonderful. Oh, the Robin well, book was really you. good. Oh, I, yeah. I appreciate course. that. Yeah, it, it's it's. Um, I gotta say though, too, to be able to like switch in between everything has got to be. It's a, such a talent. It's such a talent. Oh, thank to go. you. I, it, you know, it's 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 similar to like when I first moved to LA and you just sort of survive. You you, you just sort of pick things up pretty quickly because you're like, this is I got to do this. So this is I, I'm I'm doing this now. I'm learning this yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, is there anybody you haven't written for? I mean, let's we'll stick to the DC side because we've been doing a lot for them. Like, is there anybody you haven't written for yet that you want to? Hey guys, Dakota here with a little bit of an ad break for you. And right now, you may be wondering, how can I make a little bit of extra cash while supporting the podcast? Well, let me tell you how. The saloon doors are open, folks. You guys can support the Comic Chronicle podcast by having an ad in the show. That's right, folks. You guys can take a break from my annoying-ass voice and have an ad for your thing here on the show. To make things clear, we're not doing things political because we don't really get political on the show that much. So if you guys do enjoy the show and you want to give a little bit to the show while also making some cash back for whatever it may be for you or supporting something that you do, whether it's a YouTube page, a podcast, a book, whatever it may be, the upcoming event, I can put an ad in for you guys, whether make it myself or you have a pre-recorded ad, that is up to you. Now, if you guys want to do an ad here in the podcast, you can go and email me at filmworld, that's filmworld97 at gmail.com email me there we can work out all logistics so if you guys want to support the show and support your thing as well come on down and guess what folks email that email now let's get back to the show on the dc side i would love so one of the first comics that i picked up when i was younger was the um onomatopoeia green arrow oh, stuff. Good stuff i am dying to do green arrow at some point um that's the dream i I, especially because when I was <laughs> when I was first getting into Green Arrow, I this isn't a surprise to anyone. I grew up in a very conservative household. I thought that I was a Republican at the time. And so it was such a like interesting reading experience as a young woman who was sort of trying to figure out what she believed in life and politically wise to read the most liberal of DC's heroes. 
It's true. It's so true. Uh, it um, was like looking back on it, it, it is such a like, I don't very clearly my parents were were not concerned about what I was reading. I was they like, had no oh, I don't idea. Know. <laughs> they had no idea. No nah. idea anything about this. And I was like, this is this is maybe wouldn't have flown in their uh in, in their ideas. But uh yeah, I'd love to write for for Green Arrow. I love him. DC she's open. <laughs> Like, I'm open. Like, Always hey, open. Yeah. Oh, hey, you know, I mean, it's currently isn't Joshua Williamson working on that at the moment? I mean, Josh Williams, this is the thing is that, like, it's always hard to say, all right, for this one because, like, there's all, like, you know, Josh Williamson's amazing. So, like, I'm not going to take that away from him. I mean, you can ever. do a filler. Come on. Just at least a filler issue. Like, come on. I'll Josh. come in. You come know on. what I'd love to do also? I'd come in and I'd write me. I want more. Oh, really? Mia. That's <laughs> yes. What I want. Yes. <laughs> Love me. I pay, I will I will invest all the money to make this project happen. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to see this. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, that's oh, it must be great because especially if you're doing the auto amount of oh. I mean, yeah. I just I'm mm. that was such a good run. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I think that might have been my first introduction to Kevin Smith. Now that I'm thinking about it, because I wouldn't really? have been able to rot. Yeah, because I wouldn't have been able to rot, watch like most of the stuff at that time. But, oh like, no I way. Could no. Read his comics. Yes. <laughs> Oh man, that's uh, honestly. I'm gonna tell you what though. Like, if people tell me like, "Oh, they want to work on this," and, be, and or out of the blue, people be like, "Well, you know, I've always dreamed of wanting to do this character or do this project here." No one in five years has ever said Green Arrow, and I love that because Green Arrow <laughs> deserves the love. <laughs> he deserves all of the love. Yes. What? Oh. A, I listen. <laughs> I love. I love a little rich douche boy. Like I just he's such a little douchebag and yeah. i love that i love that for him i love that for me uh but he's also the he, best healthiest couple by the way too with black canary him and i Dino. love him he, and black canary the well, I've, couple. Written, I've written black canary before i've written um oh, a version of black canary in um in justice society world war ii which i co-wrote with jeremy adams yeah, that's true um and she like that was she turned out to be one of our favorite characters in that um but so i was like oh i can't say black canary because i have written for her but i love writing for black i i brought her into uh justice uh league meets ruby part two because i was like oh i need another person to like i need another person for justice from the justice league side of things for this i would like it to be black canary please i love black canary you are just you're sowing the seeds (laughs) <laughs> you you are sowing the seeds. Doing my best. Seeing yep. if anybody notices. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely. I You know what, though? I appreciate that a lot. I think that's pretty. You're smart. You're doing the CW thing because they did that forever. Was that they were put in the mm-hmm. seeds of like, here's an Easter egg. Here's this. But then you can go to you can go to the editors or you can go to everyone at DC and publish. Exactly. Like, well, I did Black Canary. Why not do another run? <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, there's. Oh, can I also say too that <laughs> wedding issue was fantastic. Those two had. I know. Like, oh, I. That's. I mean, it. I just. I loved everything. Like, I still continue to love everything about them, and I. My kingdom for more of of the two of them together because they just they, I they're such a like weirdly healthy. 